The other important linear object in R3 is called a plane. Now, a plane you should think of intuitively as an infinite sheet of paper. That isn't a great mathematical description. So how can we come up with a mathematical description? Use vectors. Now, I've drawn a diagram here, but remember, these sides really go out to infinity in all directions. I'm going to add a 3D coordinate system here. So in order to make some progress, I'm going to have to know one of the points on the plane. There's P0, and its position vector is R0. And just to try to make my picture nice looking, the other thing that we're going to need is another vector. And this vector is orthogonal to the plane. And I'm hoping that you can see from this picture here that it's perpendicular to this plane. But I could slide the whole thing over so that it begins at this area like that. P is going to be an unknown or an arbitrary point on the plane. And this is going to have its own position vector. And there's R. I don't know what these components are, but I do know what these components are for the known point on the plane. There is a vector that connects the two points in the plane. So this vector is going to be called V. And if you were to use the tip to tail rule for addition, this vector R0 plus the vector V should in fact give you R right there. This vector V is R minus R0. From this picture above, N is orthogonal to V. And that gives us a mathematical description of how to go forward. N dotted with V has to be zero. Another way to write this is N dotted with R minus R naught has to be equal to zero. And this is the equation of a plane. Now a plane is a collection of points and the vector r will have those points that we want. Let's say that n is a, b, and c. And if I use dot product properties, I'll have n dotted with r is n dotted with r naught. This right here is going to be a, x naught, b, y naught, and c, z naught. And this is just some constant. So I'm going to call this D. Now on this other side, I will have AX plus BY plus CZ. Here, what I'll get is another form for the equation of the plane. This is going to be called the scalar equation of a plane. Now note, if this point on the plane is 0, 0, 0, the plane goes through the origin. And that means that the equation of the plane is simpler looking. AX plus BY plus CZ is equal to zero. And if there's a zero on the right-hand side in this form, then it does go through the origin. If there is a non-zero number on the other side, then it does not go into the origin. Let's find the equation of a plane that goes through the point 4, 0, and 3, and has a normal vector of i plus j plus 2k. The normal vector is 1, 1, 2. r naught would be 4, 0, 3. And an arbitrary point on the plane is just going to be represented by x, y, z. So if we start here and we talk about r minus r naught, we're just going to build everything. So we'll have 1, 1, 2 dotted with x minus 4, y minus 0, z minus negative 3. And we want that to be 0. So that's going to give me one bunch of x minus 4, one bunch of y, and two bunches of z plus 3 is 0. So we'll get an x minus 4 plus y plus 2z 
plus 6 is 0. x plus y plus 2z is negative 2. And this represents the scalar equation of this plane. From this scalar equation, I could always take this scalar equation and solve for one of the letters. So, for example, if I wanted to isolate x, I'd have negative y minus 2z minus 2. And if I substitute this back in to the position vector x, y, and z, and what that is now going to give me is a negative y minus 2z minus 2, a y and a z. So you're seeing I've somehow eliminated one of these letters here. I could use vector properties to split this into three separate vectors. The first vector is going to have nothing but y, so it'll be y, y, and 0. The second vector is going to have nothing but z's. And then the third vector is whatever is left. So it's a negative 2, 0, and a 0. I'm going to factor out the y is a common factor in the first one. I'm going to factor out the z as a common factor in the second one. And then in the last one, there's just a bunch of constants. So what's ended up happening here, I now have some vector u and some vector w. This is some constant vector. The equation of the plane is some y times u, z times w plus some constant. And I don't know anything about the y and the z other than they are free. So this is the vector parametric form of the equation of a plane. It's reminiscent of the vector parametric equation of a line. Constant r0 plus tv. And that was our parameter. So a line is a special linear object with one parameter, whereas... A plane is a special linear object with two parameters. In some cases, it may not be so straightforward to find the vector n. So as an example, let's find the equation of the plane that goes through three points. 1, 2, negative 1, 2, 3, and 1, and 3, negative 1, and 2. Now, this time I haven't been given any vectors, but what I could do is simply take a look at this in terms of some geometry. Now, if I call this P1, P2, and P3, P1 is roughly here, P2 is roughly somewhere up here, and P3 is somewhere up here. And so there's an infinite sheet that contains these vectors. There is a vector here that I'm going to call A. A is the vector that goes from P1 to P2. In terms of components here, I'm just going to subtract all the components, point 0.1 from point 0.2. And I'll end up getting a 1, 1, and a 2. And then there is this vector that I'm going to call B. And B is the vector that goes from P1 to P3. And just like before, I'm going to subtract those components. 3 minus 1, negative 1, and 2 minus negative 1. So I'll get a 2, a negative 3, and a 3. So the n is going to be a vector that is perpendicular to both of those. So n is going to be a cross b. Now remember, the order determines whether this vector points up or down. If I compute the cross product like I normally do, 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 3, and 3, what you will find is that you'll get a 9i plus a j minus 5k. And now we can take any of the vectors that we'd like to be r0. So let's take the r0 to be corresponding to the first point, 1, 2, and negative 1. I'll have 9x minus 1, 1, y minus 2, and negative 5, z minus. Negative 1 is 0, which, if you simplify everything down, will get 9x 
plus y minus 5z is 16. Other useful problems are related to similar problems we solve with lines. What we would like to talk about is the intersection of planes. Now, the intersection of planes is a topic best dealt with in a linear algebra course, but we can talk about a small subset of different types of intersections. It's possible that two planes don't intersect, and here it's because the planes are parallel. There is some vector n common for both of them. If there are no intersections, the planes are going to be parallel. And if the planes are parallel, they have their normal or orthogonal vectors multiples of each other. If I have two planes and they intersect, it's a fact from linear algebra that they will intersect in a line. So if you have two planes intersecting, you can visualize it somewhat like this. You can think of it like pages in a book, and they will intersect in the spine of the book. And the spine of the book is where the pages are all glued in. You'll have one plane going like that and another plane going like this. This area right here, this is their intersection. And that's a line. So as an example, I'm going to give you two planes. The first plane will have an equation 2x plus 5z is negative 3. And then the second plane will be x minus 3y plus z is negative 2. Do these planes intersect? For P1, N1 is 2, 0, and 5. And for P2, the normal vector N2 is 1, negative 3, and 1. I'm just reading off the coefficients in front of the x, y, z terms. These two vectors are not multiples. And if these vectors are not multiples, that means they are not parallel, and that means that the planes are not parallel. And that means my two planes are going to intersect. So let's discuss the intersection. So if I were to say n1 dotted with n2, I'll get 2 plus 0 plus 5 is 7. Because this is not 0, that means the planes are not orthogonal. They don't intersect at a right angle. So what is the angle? Remember that from the dot product, I had a geometric definition or a geometric interpretation. And that geometric interpretation allowed me to have a cosine. The cosine of theta here could be written in terms of that dot product. We've already computed that dot product. The first vector n1 is going to have a length of 29 square rooted, while the second vector n2 is going to have a length of 11. That means the angle is the inverse cosine of that number, which is approximately 66.93 degrees. I've got two different planes that go on like this. Here is the normal vector for one of them, and here is the normal vector for the other one. And it turns out that if I were to translate this vector up here, it would be at some angle in there. And that angle would not be a right angle. I know that those two planes intersect in a line. I would like to find the equation of this line. r naught plus tv. I need to know this r naught, and I need to know this v. v is a vector in this direction. v is a vector in both plane 1 and in plane 2. That means, by the definition, the equation of a plane, v has to be orthogonal 
to both planes. And that means that V has to be orthogonal to both N1 and N2. That can tell me that V is simply going to be the cross product of those two vectors. So if I compute the cross product of the two normal vectors, what I will end up getting is 15i plus 3j minus 6k. Now you could use this as the vector v. There is a common factor of 3 everywhere. And so if you felt like it, you could take this to be the vector v. Now we need a point on the line. Now this is where some geometry is going to help us understand how to come up with this result. So here are two planes and they intersect in a line. Now let's put a coordinate axis in. Remember that these planes and lines are infinite, so they actually extend forever and ever in both of these directions. Because this vector v does not have a zero in any of its components, the line will intersect the z equals zero plane. So what I can do is I can solve for that particular point. To do this, we're going to go back to the scalar equation of the lines and try to figure out what the x and the y are when I sub in z equals 0. So from equation 1, I'll have 2x plus 0 is negative 3. So that means x is negative 3 over 2. From the second equation, I'm going to plug in that negative 3 over 2. I'll have a 3y and a 0 is negative 2. So that means negative 3 over 2 plus 2 is 3y. That means 1 half is 3y. And that means y is 1 over 6. The point R0 is negative 3 over 2, 1 over 6, and 0. And the equation of the line that represents the intersection of those two planes is negative 3 over 2, 1 over 6, 0, plus t into that vector that I found earlier, 5, 1, negative 2. 